Hey, good morning, my dear students in Chemistry 1. Welcome to this virtual class. Our topic this morning is a topic of week 5, continuation of stoichiometry. Our learning objectives are to define and describe the types of chemical reactions, identify several factors influencing the rate of chemical reactions, and determination of percentage composition and formulas from analytical data. So yun ating learning objectives this session. So let us start, let's start with the changes of matter. We have physical change, a change in physical properties of a substance without altering its composition and internal structure. So after the change, walang nabago sa internal structure ng uh, resulting uh, substances. So an example of physical change is just melting of ice, stretching of rubber, what else, so breaking of glass, cutting of paper, no? Walang nabago. Walang na-alter sa composition. Now another change is chemical change or uh, tawagan natin itong chemical reaction. So a change in which alters the composition and structure of the substance. It is also defined, it is defined as a disappearance of reactants, meaning mawala yung reactants and appearance of product or appearance of new product or appearance of new substance. So again, chemical change is chemical reaction. Now, have you tried to add acid to your milk? So the result is not milk, no? It's another substance. Another, the burning, any process of burning is chemical reaction. So dissolving an antacid in water produces a fizzy drink. That's uh, neutralization. Okay, so did you ever make a volcano by adding vinegar to a baking soda? If you did, you probably saw a mixture bubble up and foam over. So did a chemical reaction occur? How do you know? Okay, so the answer to that is yes. Lahat tayo naka-experience na ng ganito sa so baking soda with vinegar. So where vinegar is an acid, Baking soda is a base. So there is reaction between acid and base. So there is a chemical reaction happened in doing that. And you know, because the bubbles are evidence that a gas has been produced and production of gas is a sign of chemical reaction. We have evidences. How will we know that there is a chemical reaction? Or how will we know that a chemical reaction happened? Okay, first is energy change. Halimbawa, itong dalawa, we have sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. Itong dalawa are uh, colorless liquid. So kung ilagay natin yan sa, sa what's this, test tube ng parehong quantity, magkapareho lang talaga. So it is very important na lagyan talaga ng label. No? So in adding uh, in mixing NaOH with H2, H, HCl, wala pa rin mag, magbago. No? Wala pa magbabago. Kundi ang makita ninyo is increase in volume kasi you added a, uh, a colorless liquid to another colorless liquid. So tataas yung volume. But then, if you try to hold the outside of the, of the test tube, may ma-feel kayo na change in temperature. So any change in temperature is an indicator that there is energy change, thus there is chemical reaction. Now, kung yung addition ng dalawa, yung mixture ng dalawa, NaOH and HCl, kasi solution ito ang solution, ipa-evaporate ipa, ipa, ipa sa evaporating dish, so may maiwan na uh, white crystals. That white crystals is DNA Cl. At saka yung nag evaporate yun ang water. So pwede natin ma-recover ang NaCl. 
So, an educator na kahit uh, wala kayong makitang pagbabago like the other evidences, but then after reaction, may change in energy, and then further processing, merong makitang new substances. So, another is color change. No? So, beginning, so after adding another other substance, nagiging red, initially green, naging pula by adding other substance. Then, color change in this example is an indicator that there is chemical reaction. So, another we have this evolution of gas. Okay, dito tayo sa baba. We have a liquid. And then, i-add natin itong uh, solid material. So, kung makita niyo yung result, there is uh, evolution of gas in the form of bubbles. Next is the production of heat and light. So, any process of burning is a chemical reaction. Magbabago na yung uh, reactants into new substance in the form of heat and light. Another is formation of precipitate. So after adding uh, other substance, the first substance, meron mag-change, no? May cloudy, ibat ibang color. And then kung meron centrifuge, ipa ilagay yan sa centrifuge, then meron mag-substances, new substances, one, two, three, sa bottom ng test tube. So that's, that is, this is the precipitate. Yung nagsettle sa bottom ng test tube. Okay. So there are, there are three kinds of changes that would always accompany chemical reaction. So as the reactions progress, reactant change to product. Okay. So ano yung mga uh, changes na yun? Properties. One is property. So properties, composition, and energy content. So halimbawa, we have this sujum. Sujum metal and chlorine gas to form sujum chloride. So ano pala ang properties ng sujum? Sujum is a metal, no? Soft, silver white metal and would react violently with water. So yan ang properties ng sujum metal. At saka na din ang properties ng chlorine. It's a gas. Chlorine gas, a non-metal element, and a pale yellow-green color. So, so, after reaction, nabago yan lahat. That's why property ang isa sa mga changes na always accompanied a chemical reaction. So, after reaction, nagbago na yung property ng new substance na NaCl. So, NaCl is sodium chloride. This is a white crystalline solid found in your kitchen, sa kusina. No? Makapag-preserve ng food. So, hindi siya kasi itong chlorine gas is a poisonous gas. No? is metal plus poisonous gas na no? nagiging uh, gamit sa kusina as flavoring ng uh, food. Okay. Next is composition. Yung composition ng reactants, iba doon sa composition ng product. So, in NA, so before sa reaction, 100% ang NA, ang composition ng NA. While ang um, chlorine is also 100% chlorine. This is also 100% chlorine. But then, pagdating ng sodium chloride after reaction, nabago yan. So, to find the percent of Na in NaCl, we have to recall kung ano ang uh, atomic mass ng Na from periodic table. Na is 23. Chlorine is 35. The total 
mass is 58. So kung kunin natin yung percentage ng NA, percent of NA therefore, is equal to mass of NA, 23, divided by its total mass, NA and CL, this is 58. And then multiply that by 100. So ganun din yung sa percent of chlorine. Chlorine. So from 35, divided by total mass, the 58, and then multiply that by 100. So what is that? 23 divided by 58 times 100 is 39.66. This is 39.66%. While the chlorine, 35 divided by 58, we have 60. This is 60.34. In percent. Okay, to check kung tama yung process, i-add ninyo itong dalawa, the total must be 100. So this is 100% NACL consists of 39%, 39.66% sujum. Ito para sa sujum. And 60.34 para sa chlorine. So ibig sabihin, Yung NA from 100 nagiging 39.66 after reaction in forming NACF. Okay, so that's the composition. And the third is the energy content. So there is great amount of light and heat in the process. Okay. Next, changes occur every time and every second of the day. How fast a chemical reaction occurs is called reaction rate. So if we consider a bump reacts very rapidly. Wood is slow in decaying process. In decay of wood is chemical reaction. So bakit kaya ganun? Okay, there are factors that would affect reaction rates. The following are nature of reacting substances. Ano yung uh, mga reactants? No? And two, temperature. In what temperature would that uh, reaction happen? And then third, ano yung mga concentrations ng reactants? And four, meron bang catalyst? Meron bang inhibitors na nadagdag? Okay. So, First is temperature of reactants. So how is temperature affect the reaction rate? So when temperature of reactants is higher, the rate of the reaction is faster. At higher temperature, the particles of reactants have more energy, so they move faster. So as a result, they are more likely to bump into one another and to collide with greater force. The lower temperature slows the rate of spoilage. Okay, kung meron kayong spaghetti, so it is uh, a need na ilagay niyo yan sa refrigerator kung wala nang kakain para hindi mas spoil ang pagkain. No? So food spoils faster at higher temperature. Higher temperature yung nasa table lang kumpara kung ilagay niyo sa refrigerator. So that is why meron tayong uh, refrigerator para ma-preserve, ma-lesser yung spoilage ng food by lowering the temperature. So in lowering the temperature, less ang reaction process ng food. Next is the concentration of reactants. Concentration is the number of particles of a substance in a given volume. So when the concentration of reactants is higher, the concentration or the reaction rate is faster. At higher concentrations, particles of reactants are crowded closer together, so they are more likely to collide and react. A greater concentration of oxygen in the air makes combustion more rapid if a fire is, starts burning. 
So we have here an example. We have a hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. Commercial, yun ang tinatawag na muriatic. Okay, so we have two test tubes containing hydrochloric acid but different concentrations. So itong isa, lower ang concentration by diluting the acid. And uh, yung isa naman higher in concentration. Kung purity ang pag-usapan, pure, sabihin natin na pure yung higher concentration, tapos uh, by combination with water, eh, diluted ang lower concentration. Now, itong blue, idagdag natin dito, ikulog natin dito. Okay. Zinc metal yan. So, saan sa dalawa yung faster yung reaction? Dito sa higher concentration. Mas madali ma ma powder no yung metal yung zinc metal at saka faster yung production of bubbles so that indicates concentration would affect reaction rate so sa application it is dangerous to smoke or use open flames when oxygen is in use because of the higher than normal concentration of oxygen the flame of a match, lighter, or cigarette could spread quickly to other materials of even cause or even cause an explosion. Next is next factor is surface area. Surface area. So when a solid substance is involved in the chemical reaction, only the matter at the surface of a substance is exposed to other reactants. If a solid has more surface area, more of it is exposed and able to react. Therefore, increasing the surface area of a solid reactance increases the reaction rate. Okay, so we have an iron exposed to air and water. So saan dito sa dalawa? Ito, this is, yung hammer is made of iron din. It's iron A. So saan sa dalawa ang faster yung reaction? Yung process of rusting. So of course, itong sa iron nail. Kasi exposed yung part ng nail. Kumpara dito. No? So again, uh, Increasing the surface area of a solid reactance increases the reaction rate. Mas madali ang reaction pag uh, smaller pieces yung reactance, solid reactance. Fourth is the presence of catalyst. So some reactions need extra help to occur quickly. May, may tinatawag tayo na catalyst. Ito yung pampa speed up sa chemical reaction, pampadali sa chemical reaction. No? So they need another substance called catalyst, the substance that increases the rate of chemical reaction. So it is not a reactant in the reaction. Hindi yan kasali sa reactants. Kundi help para mapadali yung reaction process. So it is not changed or used up in the reaction kung ano yung Composition ng catalyst, yun pa rin yung composition ng catalyst at the end of the reaction. So how is catalyst like a tunnel through a mountain? So catalyst is comparable to a tunnel sa bundok. A catalyst provides a faster pathway for a chemical reaction to occur. Halimbawa, ito yung bundok. So if you want to climb the, the bundok, Akyat ka sa taas, papunta sa other end. Kailangan niya ng longer time. Compared sa kung merong tunnel dito. Dito na dadaan. So yan ang role ng catalyst in a chemical reaction para mapadali ang reaction process to speed up chemical reaction then we need a catalyst. So how catalysts work? It interacts with reactants, so the reaction can occur by an alternative pathway. 
that has a lower activation energy. Where? Activation energy is the energy needed to start a reaction. When activation energy is lower, more reactant particles have enough energy to react. So the reaction goes faster. So catalyst brings the reactants together by temporarily bonding with them. This makes it easier and quicker for the reacts, reactants to react together. So that's how catalyst work. Okay, we have catalyst in living things. Chemical reactions constantly occur inside things. Many of these reactions require catalysts so they will occur quickly enough to support life. Catalysts in living things are called enzymes. So maybe extremely effective and a reaction that takes a split second to occur in an enzyme might take many years without that enzyme. So more than 1,000 different enzymes are necessary for human life. Many enzymes are needed for digestion of food. So an example, we have the amylias, lace, no? which is found in the mouth and small intestine, catalyzes the breakdown of starch to sugar. Okay, so if we chew starchy food like soda cracker for a couple of minutes, you'll notice that it starts to taste slightly sweet. So why does this happen? The starch in the cracker start to break down the sugars with the help of the enzyme. Okay, so next we have this chemical equation. Like in mathematics, kung meron tayong equation in math, mathematical equation, we also have this in chemistry called chemical equation. So it summarizes a great deal of information about the substances involved in the reaction. It is not only a qualitative statement describing what substances are involved, but also a quantitative statement describing how much of each reactant or product is involved. So a reactant is a reactant or a reactance is a substance or are substances that is initially present and is changed during chemical reaction. While product or products is a substance or substances produced during a chemical reaction. And the chemical equation is a balanced chemical equation that shows formula of the reactants. Then an arrow, reactants, then an arrow, then the product with equal number of atoms of each. That is done by balancing of equation. So we have any reactants, we have H2, H2, hydrogen plus oxygen to form water. So in balancing of equation or in writing chemical equation, it is necessary na alam niyo how to write a chemical compound formula. No? So notice na hydrogen and oxygen uh, are under diatomic molecules, meaning hindi sila makakombine by simply adding H and O. So it should be by pair. So kaya tinatawag na diatomic molecule. So in writing a chemical equation, it should be H2 and O2. It is not H and O. Kasi pag H and O, meaning wrong na yan, no? Okay, so in writing, we have H2 plus O2 to form H2O. Next thing is to check how many hydrogen na sa left side. So ang, ang subscript indicating two atoms ng hydrogen at saka two sa oxygen sa left side. Sa right side, we have two hydrogen, oxygen one. This is done by inspection. The other way of balancing equation is by redox, oxidation reduction. So by inspection, tingnan lang ninyo kung ano ang hindi balance, then i-balance ninyo by writing a coefficient. So, ang oxygen ang hindi balance. So let us write two before 
before the formula of water. Do not write 2 para maging H2O2. Hindi yan water. Ma-alter na niya ang compound. So, kung magdagdag kayo ng numero dito sa coefficient. So, in writing 2, magiging 1 times 2 itong oxygen. 1 times 2 is 2. Tapos, yung affected ang hydrogen, so lagyan nyo ng 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So, dapat may 2 din dito sa hydrogen, writing 2 before H2. So, pwede in balancing of equation, pwede dito sa coefficient lang kayo mag-trial and error. Hindi dito sa formula. Okay? So, may mga state of reaction, no? Merong G, kung makakita kayo ng subscript na G, gas. Halimbawa nito, lagyan ito ng G. Ibig sabihin, hydrogen gas, oxygen gas, to form, say, liquid water. Ayan. So, state yan siya. Ano ba? Solid, liquid, or gaseous ba? Yung uh, condition ng reactants and products. Okay? So, next let us uh, discuss the types of chemical reaction. First is combination. When we say combination reaction, is simply combine, no? So union, no? So when two or more substances react to form one product, two or more substances react to form product. Or is one in which a single substance is produced by the union of two or more substances. Mathematically, it's like A plus B to form AB. So, we have an example, aluminum plus oxygen to form aluminum oxide. Iron plus sulfur to form iron sulfide. Calcium oxide, carbon dioxide to form calcium carbonate. Na? Sodium plus chlorine plus to form NaCl. So, yan ang mga examples ng combination. Ibig sabihin, we are given uh, two, merong two reaction, reactants, or A, first react to, may to react to second to form a single product. Second is the reverse, the composition reaction. So it is a reaction in which one compound decomposes to form two or more substances. So product can be either element or compound. This is a reaction in which two or more substances are produced from single substance. So mathematically, A, B breaks into A and B. That's why the composition. So we have KClO3 or potassium chlorate to form potassium chloride and oxygen gas. Water decomposes into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Sugar decompose, decomposes to carbon and water. So, isang, isang reactant forming uh, two products, two or more. Third is single replacement. In single replacement or displacement reaction, a metal replaces another metal ion from a solution or one element replaces another in its compounds. So it is in the form A plus BY to form AY plus B. Okay, simply uh, A would replace B and would combine Y to form AY. Now, my mga elements, when we base on the activity of metals, if A is less active than B, then hindi pwede si A makareplace kay B. Dapat si A should be, uh, would be more active than B para pwede niya ma-replace. Okay. So like in our example, zinc is more active than hydrogen. So pwede niya ma-replace si hydrogen to form I to combine with chlorine and to form zinc chloride, leaving hydrogen as element. It's a gas. 
Similarly, we have iron and copper. So iron is more active than copper. So pwede niya ito ma-replace to form iron sulfate and elemental copper. Okay, we also have this NABR or sodium bromide plus chlorine gas. So in this case, in this NA, no, would this be R? Ang pwedeng replace. So si chlorine would replace Br to form NaCl and leaving Br as elemental, Br as gas. So that is uh, the single replacement or displacement reaction. Next is the double replacement or the metathesis. No? Two compounds reacts, react to form two or two new compounds. Two compounds react to form new compounds or new substances. This is in the form of AX plus BY to form AY plus BX. It's like nag change lang ng partner ito. So CA. Si would combine Y to form AY, and B would com combine X to form BX. So of course, hindi pwede na si X and Y ang mag-combine. Kasi sa, L, sa compound, chemical compound, merong part na positive, the one negative. So like in the aluminum chloride, aluminum chloride, this is the negative part. This is the positive part. So, yung positive pwede makareplace sa positive. Negative would replace negative. Hindi pwede yung puro negative. No? Limbawa si Na. Na is positive. Tapos, OH is an ion with negative charge. Hindi pwede na Cl i-combine sa OH. One should be positive. The other one should be negative. And usually, mauna ang positive followed by negative in writing a, com a chemical formula. So, yan ang double replacement. Next is combustion reaction. So, a substance reacts with oxygen from the air and transfers energy to the surroundings as light and heat. Combustion is the scientific word for burning. That's why when you say any process of burning is a chemical reaction, so scientific word nyan is combustion. The products of combustion reaction are called oxides. Okay, so we have a combustion of ethanol with oxygen to combine or to form CO2 and water. Now, when you say combustion, may uh, tinatawag tayo na complete complete combustion and incomplete okay pag sabihin natin complete combustion dalawa lang ang products CO2 and water basta complete combustion CO2 and water pag incomplete combustion meron pa yung other additional product. Limbawa, yung burning of fuel, yung gasoline. So, pag complete ang combustion, wala problema ang sasakyan, CO2 ang product at saka water. Pero, pag may problema na ang sasakyan, yung sa sa, uh, sa car, makita niyo na uh, grabe kaitim ang usok. No? That's not CO2. That is not water. So, mayroong additional product pa. So, again, a complete combustion would have products, would yield a products of CO2 and H2O. But incomplete, may additional uh, product pa. Okay. So, we have burning of butane, no? combustion of butane with oxygen. So, again, any process of combustion, is made to react with O2, O2 and O2. And take note sa product, CO2, H2O, CO2, H2O. Pag-complete ang combustion. 
Okay, so familiarize muna natin ito. Molecule describes by a chemical formula showing numbers and types of atoms involved and a structural formula. Fe, pag makakita ka yung Fe, that's simply symbol of an element, particularly iron. If may makita ko yung Fe2+, Fe3+, that's iron ion. Iron ion, meaning charge ion or charge iron. Pag may makita kayong Fe3O4, that's formula of a compound. Pag may makita kayong H2, 2H2, that's O2, to form 2H2O, that's a balance equation. Okay, so next thing is to determine the percentage composition and uh, formula from analytic data. So let us define molecular formula. So this is the exact formula of a molecule of a substance that is always an integer multiple of empirical. While empirical formula represents the simplest whole number ratio of various types of atoms in a compound. So it has a uh, molecular formula is related to empirical formula in this equation. Where x is an integer. Molecular weight of a compound is the mass in grams of one molecule of the compound. This computed by summing the atomic weights of its constituent atoms. Okay, so let us apply how to uh, find the percentage composition. In our example, penicillin, the first of now large number of antibiotics or antibacterial agent was discovered accidentally by Scottish bacteriologist Alexander Fleming in 1928. But he was never be able to isolate it as a pure compound. So this is similar antibiotics save millions of lives that would otherwise have been lost to infection. Penicillin F has a formula of C14, H20, and 2SO4. So compute for the mass percent of each element. So meaning how many percent is carbon? How many percent is H? How many percent is N? How many percent is S? And how many percent is O in the form formula of penicillin F? So first thing is to copy the formula. And then next to that is to write the elements in the formula. C-H-N-S-O, C-H-N-S-O, and then identify o i-summarize ninyo kung how many atoms ang C. Lagay nyo dito, 20, hydrogen 2, nitrogen 1, in the absence of subscript meaning 1, O4. Next to that is to find the atomic masses, atomic mass found in your periodic table. Sa periodic table ito. Okay. Carbon is 12, rounded off. Hydrogen is 1. Nitrogen is 14. S is 32. O is 16. Then do the multiplication. Multiply and add. So, after na multiply ito, add ninyo. So, the total mass of uh, the formula is 312. Now, our task is to find the percent of each element. Meaning, find the percent of carbon hanggang percent of O. So, to find for percent of carbon, you need the mass of carbon. And you divide that by the total mass of the compound. Okay. So, after that, you divide nyo, then multiply by 100. That's 53.85. And ha, gawin ninyo yan sa hydrogen, nitrogen, S, and O. So, if you are asked how many percent is nitrogen in penicillin F, nitrogen, so your answer should be 8.97. Pero sabi dito or ask dito sa problem, compute each, in each element. So, yung answer ito, lima. No? Now, to check kung tama ang process ninyo, tama yung 
pagka-compute, then i-add niyo lahat yung percentages ng elements and then the total must be equal or near 100. Huwag naman yung 98, siguro 99.99, 99.98 or exact 100. So next, yun ang pagkuha ng percentage composition given ang formula. So what if given ang percentage and we are going to find for the formula, especially in the uh, mga laboratory analysis? Okay, like for example, kung i-analyze yung substance, for example, may mga confiscated substances, white substance na uh, suspected, like suspected Okay, so halimbawa sa mga laboratory, for example, sa mga crime laboratory, crime lab, no? Kung may ma-confiscate ma sila ng mga uh, substances, white substances na sa sabihin natin na suspected, prohibited drug, ang gagawin nila i-analyze yan sa laboratory. Now, uh, isa sa mga proseso, pwede nila i-burn yan siya tapos kunin nila yung percentage ng uh, elements, element, percentage ng elements sa substance. And then next is to uh, find a way Kunin yung formula. So kung magkapareho sa formula ng uh, prohibited drug, ibig sabihin positive yung nakuha nila. Pero if not, meaning baka uh, tawas lang yun. No? So yung process is by laboratory analysis. So we have a steps in finding the formula. First is to find the number of moles, find the ratios, and find the formula. If meron molecular formula, then do 4, 5, and 6. But then may mga formula na pareho lang din yung sa empirical. Okay, let us do this. So one type of penicillin contains the following laboratory analysis. C, H, N, S and O. Actually, ito yung result natin kanina. Now, una-una gagawin niyo is to check yung percentage. Dapat 100. Otherwise, merong mali o merong kulang sa data. Now, since 100 man ito, so okay na yan. Now, we need a basis. Kailangan natin mag-base dito kasi 100 man ito. So, we need a basis of 100 grams. Ibig sabihin that in a 100 gram sample, Carbon is 53.85 grams. Hydrogen is 6.41 grams. N is 8.97 grams. S is 10.26 grams. O is 20.51 grams. Kasi nag-base tayo ng 100. So, wala na ang percentage kundi maging mass na ito. No? So, to find for the uh, ratio of C, you need the mass, mass ito from the percentage, and then you divide niyo yan sa atomic mass found in the periodic table. Carbon is 12, hydrogen is 1, nitrogen 14, S32, O16. So again, mass niyo sa taas, you divide niyo ng atomic mass sa baba. Divide niyo yun mass ng atomic mass ng element. So, dividing 53.85 by 12, we have this, we obtain 4.49. And so on. No? Hanggang oxygen 20.51 over 16 is 1.28. So, yan ang first quotient. Next to that is to identify among the first quotient kung saan ang pinaka least value. At i-divide niyo yan sa lahat ng mga, uh, sa lahat ng first quotients. Divide niyo na yung lahat. So, 4.49 divide 0 0.32 is 14. Approximately, uh, you need to round off the whole number. Kasi wala tayong nakita na formula like uh, C tapos 1.5. 
h na 0.77, wala tayong ganun, no? It's a whole number. So, again, approximately, i-round off ninyo kasi meron itong decimal values pa after 14. So, round off the whole number. And then, we have 20 divided by, uh, for nitrogen, we have 2, S1, and O4. So, yan ang ilagay nyo dito sa formula. Summarize kung ano yung mga elements na yun. Ilagay nyo yung mga uh, ratio. Therefore, in the formula, 14 atoms ang carbon, 20 atom ang uh, atom hydrogen, 2 sa nitrogen, 1 sa sulfur, and 4 sa oxygen. So that's how to find for the formula from analytical data. Now, there are times na pwede na kung makakita kayo sa dito sa first quotient ng 2.5, alanganin ang 2.5, i-round off ninyo ng 2 or it's a 3. So in this case, i-multiply, find a way na maging whole number ito, multiplying by 2 to, to obtain 5. Halimbawa, may 2.5 dito. No? So i-multiply nyo yung lahat ng 2 para mag whole number. Or kung makakakay ng 1.33, this is one-thirds. Mas multiply niyo yan para magka-whole number. So, that's all. We have this lesson summary. A chemical change or chemical reaction is a change which alters the composition of and structure of the substance. It's simply a disappearance of reactants and appearance of the product. So, a chemical equation consists of reactants on the left side, an arrow, meaning yield or produce, and on the right side of it, the products or product. So for the evidences, how will we know that there is chemical reaction or the chemical reaction happened? First is there is energy change, color change, formation of precipitate, production of heat and light, and evolution of gas. For the types of chemical reaction, we have combination reaction, decomposition, single replacement or displacement reaction, metathesis or double replacement. And so with combustion reaction. For the formula, anong kaibahan ng molecular formula from empirical formula? Molecular formula is the exact formula of a molecule of a substance that is always an integer multiple of empirical. Empirical formula represents the simplest whole number ratio of various types of atoms in a compound and is related in this equation. When you say molecular weight, actually molecular, molecular mass, no? Uh, in chemistry, uh, we can interchange Use we can use weight instead of mass, mass instead of weight, but then in physics, mass is not equal to weight. No? So molecular weight or molecular mass of a compound is the mass in grams of one molecule of compound and is computed by summing or adding the atomic weights of its constituent atoms. Okay, that's all for today.